Hallelujah. The second part of this message, how did I get here? Like I was saying, you know, Jesus came to save us from sin. Let me conclude the aspect. Like I said earlier, I didn't plan to get into all that. But God has just brought it up. We pray before we come around. We even pray to God to lead us in what to preach to you. And God knows how to use us. We are servants of God. Meaning we live ourselves in the hand of God for God to use us. To use us through, to preach his word and to bless people. And sometimes God does what just happened. I didn't plan to say all that, but it came and it came real good. Okay, I want to summarize that and move on with this message to tell you that the fact that we say that Jesus shall save us from our sins, that doesn't mean that Jesus, you know, always save people instantaneously. That doesn't mean if you go to Jesus, you confess all your sin will be, you will stop sinning immediately forever. But that's the goal to reach. That doesn't mean either that will have to take you years and years before you stop sinning completely. But that's the goal. That's, remember, that's the goal Jesus came to accomplish in your life. You know, sometimes it's the power of God that does it. It's not our own strength. The power of God that does it in, in us. But we have our part to play also. The power of God does it, but God that does not look at us like robots, manipulate you. Chaka, 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 chaka. Go here, choco, 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 choco. Do this. Uh, 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 uh. No, we are not robots like that. God doesn't do that with us. Your will and the will of God have to be together, work together for you to be delivered and saved from sin. So I'm not saying if somebody confess Jesus, you give your life to Jesus, all your sins are that's a goal. You have to be sensitive. It depends on it depends on you and it, it depends on you and it depends on the power of God that came because you know for sure that some people preach and you won't feel any power of God. Some people preach that there will be a bigger power of God. You know, it depends on how available that preacher is that God will use him more. Or you go somewhere, you sick, for example. One preacher will pray, will pray for you, nothing will happen. Another preacher will pray for you, something will happen. Why? It depends on the, the level of the power of God on different people. And it depends on you too. It depends on how available you are. Sometimes the power of God will step in you to, 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 to quicken your faith and your decision to do it. Sometimes your decision and a little power of God it just depends on a combination of you and God, okay? So I don't want to stay on that subject too much. But that should be the goal for you to be completely delivered. Or if you are not completely delivered, I want you to give your life to Jesus. You should be working on yourself. Of course with the power of God to get there. And if you know that, that's a secret though. If you know that, hey, I have to get there. I have to be able to read that verse of verse 21 of Matthew chapter 1. Then you will be, you be, you keep on going and say, nah, I, I won't stop. I won't stop. I won't stop. But if you cheer, you say, well, I start, I improve a little bit. And you stop there. Oh, you don't have in mind that you have to get there. That's why people are in the church for years. And they're still doing some all kind of crazy things that shock people. Because they never set a goal from themselves to reach a level where they are completely saved from sin, like I show you. With the example of the pen representing a human being drowning in the water. Okay, let me go back to my message. How did I get here? I was saying many of us we so, we get surprised when we sin against God because we are like, hey, uh, how did I get here? Say, ah, uh, sin, man. We behave as if we don't know how the sin happened to us. That's what I want to deal with. When I read uh, James chapter one verse thirteen to sixteen, let me read it again. I'll move on. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted where he is drawn away of his own loss and enticed. Then when loss has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin when it's finished brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. The passage we read is saying, it's, it's simply saying that, number one, temptation is not from God. Verse, verse 13 says, Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. 
<laughs> Don't you hear people say, well, God is the one putting this on me. God knows why I'm living in sin. God is involved in it. I'm messing around and whatever you do, using drugs or, or sleeping around and, and not married to somebody, sleeping with a person or whatever sin is, homosexuality, lesbianism, and, and whatever, whatever sin, adultery, you know, and wickedness and practicing witchcraft and whatever sin it is in your life. Say, oh, you know, God knows, man. God have all power. No, 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 no. The Bible says, let no man say when he's tempted that God is tempting. God cannot tempt you. Because God is a holy God. God hates sin. God doesn't want sin to be in your life. And temptation, the, the thing mentioned temptation here because temptation is what brings sin. Before somebody sin, there are generally there are there is a temptation. And the we will see in a minute. So temptation is, is what precedes sin. Right? We are about to see the process, how it was. So number one, we're talking about nobody should say that God is tempting them. So whatever situation you find yourself in, when you end up in sin, you cannot say God put that situation in you. I've seen people who got uh, ladies who are pregnant and have a kid and they're not married to that guy. That's fornication, come on. And now you want to say that God knows what he's doing? Come on. That's foolishness. That's not God. You can say you make your own mess. You have sinned. But you can say that because you repented and you changed your life around, God used that to bring something good out of it. But you cannot say that God orchestrated you to be, go and fornicate to begin with. That's, that's foolishness according to the Bible. Because we just read to you, the Bible say, let no one say when he's tempted that God is the one tempting him. So that's clear. That anything that goes in sin, God is not in it. Because God wants you to live holy. God wants you to avoid sin. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die for us, to save us from sin. It's all over the Bible. The Bible say, whoever commits sin shall not go into the kingdom of God. And mention all the sin I mentioned to you. There are many more. Lascivious men, things against nature, lying, deceiving, malicious, and stealing, killing, whatever. So, anything that leads into sin, and here, the, the, the Bible is talking about when you are tempted, because temptation is what leads to sin. So in case you say, oh, what is temptation? People are confused about temptation and trial. Let's just say, whatever leads to sin, that's temptation. You know, so when you are tempted, don't say God is the one tempting you, because God cannot tempt you. Because temptation is what leads to sin. So, when you are tempted, nobody can say when you are tempted, you are tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. God does not tempt anybody. You cannot say, me, I'm so special, God is putting this on me. No. Whatever leads to sin is not from God. Because it's the will of God that you don't sin at all. If you go do your own thing and God help you because you repented or God have favor on you and use that situation to turn it around, that doesn't mean God was in the, in the, in the beginning. We have to get that straight in our life. Because many people say all kind of crazy things. Oh, if I didn't, uh, if my husband didn't, uh, you divorce. Divorce is not from God. If you divorce or whatever it is, you can't turn it around and say, well, God, well, God can, can use the craziness of your mess to make you see the light. Because some of us, we have to suffer before we open our eyes to see what God is saying. If we, trouble don't fall on our life, we will open our eyes to see, uh, to, to look for God and to give our life to God. But the trouble, God use the trouble. But that doesn't mean God wanted it to be like that. It's like a, you have two children. One way you tell him what to do, he does it romantically, you're good. But another one, you have to, you have to beat him up or punish him before he does it. Does that mean the child that he doesn't listen, that is rebellious, he becomes favorable because you have to punish him before he listens to you? No! That, that punishment is just an empty, an empty thing the child is getting before getting to the level. 
So the child that obey you automatically, that's the child you like the most. I don't want to delay in that. Like I said, you know, I guess you, you get my point. So God wants us to obey Him right away. That's what God desires. But if we are so stubborn, and then we have to do bad, and the trouble of sin will follow us, and then that, and then that's what will help us to say, oh, I'm perishing, God save me. Well, that's what happened when people think that God was in the, in, in the temptation or in the sin in the first place. No! The Bible said God cannot tempt any of us. Okay, I want
So that's why we are saying you have to identify yourself. Because the goal of this message, so you don't wake up and say, Oh, I'm terrible. Uh, sin, I just sin, man. Sin just happened, man. The devil is uh, the devil is making me to sin, man. And blame the devil, blame everything else by you. Sin begin from you. Come back and watch the rest of the last portion of this message. How did I get here? Hallelujah.